We have a bunch of new active regions on the Earth-facing disk, plus more on their way, solar storms, big flare players, and some fast solar wind. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has so much in potential. As we take a look at our Earth-facing sun, look at all this activity. The first thing you notice is this big black coronal hole. This has been rotating into the Earth strike zone, and right now it's been sending us some fast solar wind. As a matter of fact, it's already bumped us up to storm levels, and over the next couple days could keep us at storm levels or active conditions kind of back and forth as we get some more aurora, possibly down to mid-latitude. So enjoy all that. But my goodness, that's just this beginning. Do you see all of these bright regions? We have no less than seven sunspot clusters, possibly more, on the Earth-facing disk right now, including several that are big flare players. We have region 2907 and 2908. They are have they have a minor risk for uh, X-class flares, so we are watching them very carefully. On top of that, look off into the east limb in the south, Wham! Did you see that? That's a massive solar storm that got launched. Now, it's not Earth-directed, but this is from region 2912, and this region looks like as it rotates more into Earth view could continue to be a solar storm player. So we have solar storms and big flare potential, and we've got that solar flux boosted back into the triple digits, well into the triple digits, which means radio propagation on Earth's day side is just booming. And these conditions, as you can see, will continue continue easily over this next week. We could even get some more big flares, so that does mean radio blackout risks, but we are keeping our eyes all over this sun. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, you can see we've actually been watching it rise over this past week. In fact, it started rising back on the 13th, and as it continued to rise, that solar flux rose right along with it. In fact, we've popped into triple digits again, which is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Last I checked, we were about in the 120s, and that means great radio propagation on Earth's day side. But as you can see, there's a lot of flare activity as as well, so that does mean a lot of noise on the bands. In fact, on the 17th, we did pop an M-class flare, but it was really impulsive and very short-lived, so for the most part, more bark than bite. Meanwhile, things have kind of calmed down a little bit. We are popping a lot of C-class flares. Activity has quieted down just a little bit, but as you see as we move into the 20th, those C-class flares are starting to pop again, so they're almost being like little paparazzi bulbs, and that could signify that we could get some bigger uh, uh, flares coming in here soon and cause some radio blackouts for GPS users and new amateur radio operators. So stay vigilant, especially if you're on Earth's day side or if you're near those dawn dust terminators. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past week, we've been really hovering between unsettled conditions and even quiet conditions, and this has been mainly due to some small pockets of fast solar wind that really haven't amounted to all that much. But the thing is, is that as we quieted down, right about the 19th and into the 20th, you can see the influence of that fast solar wind from that larger coronal hole that's rotated into the Earth strike zone. It's pumped, jumped us up to active conditions and then even storm levels, and now we're back to active conditions right at the moment, but things may kind of bounce around just a little bit, and it's definitely going to be bringing us aurora to high latitudes and possibly down to mid-latitudes if these conditions are able to be sustained over the next couple days. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's the sun, here's Earth, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo A's view, well, you can sure see that big long line of bright regions around the southern part of the disk. But man, look back past it. You can see on Stereo's east limb, look at the three really bright regions in the south and even one in the north. These are new regions that are rotating into view. One of them is region 2912, but it looks like we might have 
two, maybe three more regions that could be numbered in the next few days, and they are by far the brightest region. In fact, region 2912 is the one that looks like it launched that big solar storm that we saw that's not moving toward Earth, but with a solar storm that big, that definitely means it could be a, a more unsettled and could be a big solar storm and big flare player. So we're keeping our eyes open and watching these regions because that X flare risk might actually move up in the next couple days. Switching to our moon, we are now moving out of the full moon on our way to a third quarter. And by the 25th, the moon will still be about 67% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, or I don't know, possibly even Santa Claus, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are being hit by that fast solar wind from that big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone right now. As a matter of fact, it's already bumped us to solar storm levels and then back down to active conditions. And these conditions will easily continue over the next few days. As a matter of fact, at high latitudes, no is expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 45% chance of a major storm. Now, mid latitudes, we're really only expecting expecting unsettled to active conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. And this will last over the next couple days, so we could conceivably get some sporadic aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. So at high latitudes, if you're an aurora photographer, you definitely should be getting a good show. At mid-latitudes, it might be a little bit harder to catch, and if you're dedicated, you could actually catch some pretty nice views. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, we actually have seven different numbered sunspot clusters on the Earth-facing disk, and some of them are actually big flare players. In fact, NOAA's giving us about a 20% chance of M-class flares over the next couple days, with about a 5% chance of X-flare risk as well. So you GPS users on Earth's day side, especially if you're near dawn or near dusk, be vigilant when it comes to your GPS reception because we could have radio blackouts over the next couple days and possibly even longer. In fact, we've got the solar flux boosted back up into triple digits because of all of these regions, which is really good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. You guys are dealing with decent radio propagation on Earth's day side. And we have more regions rotating into Earth view over the next couple days that could boost that solar flux even more but they could also add to the big flare risk. So everyone realized that we could have radio blackouts and that could cause issues for radio comms and GPS reception. Now on top of that, because we do have all of these regions on the earth facing disk, we actually have a small chance of a radiation storm. As a matter of fact, NOAA is giving us about a 5% chance of a radiation storm over the next couple days. And considering we still have a pretty high cosmic ray flux right now, this does mean that that you frequent flyers and, uh, uh, and it does include air crew as well and pregnant uh, passengers who are flying over 800 hours annually and are flying at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose, plus you should be careful of those potential radiation storms. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is showing a lot of activity and some decent potential. We have a coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone that's sending us some fast wind right now. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you should be able to be getting a show. And if you're at mid latitudes, well, there may be a bit of a sporadic show over the next couple days, but if you're dedicated, you might get some really good views. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we have a lot of active regions on the Earth Earth-facing disk, and that's been boosting the solar flux back up into the triple digits. And you know what? More is to come because we have even more regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view. And that should keep uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side in the decent range for you for easily the next few days. 
Just know that while we have this solar storm going, uh, radio propagation on Earth's night side might be a little bit dicey, so just hang in there. And now you GPS users, well, things aren't looking so great for you right now. On Earth's day side, we have the risk of radio blackouts, so that could cause you issues for GPS reception, especially near dawn and dusk. And then on Earth's night side, we also have a solar storm that's kind of going on and off. And if you're anywhere near Aurora, that could cause issues for you as well when it comes to reception. So just hang in there. This should kind of pass over the next couple days. And just remember, if you're a, a UAV pilot, that you've got to watch your drift and make sure you calibrate those magnetometers often. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.